All right, this lesson talks about absolute value equations, and we actually have a great question here sent in by a student named Gavin. He says, we talked about absolute values in class, but this question is freaking me out, and I have no idea where to start. Help. <laughs> so here's the equation he has. Uh, the absolute value of negative 11 plus 5 squared equals 50y minus the absolute value of positive 31 minus 49y. Now, the reason I said this is an excellent question is because it really illustrates a point that I, I try and get across to my students whenever they're working on something that's sort of long and complex like this. And it's going to sound kind of funny, but what I always tell them is, if you don't know what you should do, do something you know you can do and see if it makes your equation more recognizable in a different manner. Now, we know that this whole thing looks really scary, and we know that the absolute values look a little bit disconcerting, but there are some other things we know we can do based on things that we've done before. For instance, we have 50y here minus 49y. And we know that these two things are different terms, so as long as we keep the value to the left of them, this negative 49y and this positive 50y, we can combine those like terms. So if we do that first, we already have things simplified dramatically because we go from 50y and 49y to just y on that side. And then all we have left is minus the absolute value of plus 31. Now, Plus 31 is kind of a silly thing to write because we never bother to write that plus symbol if it's going to be positive, so there's no reason to put that in there. So we should just say the absolute value of 31. Then on the other side of the equation, we also already know what 5 squared is, so there's no reason to write that confusing notation. We can just say 25. And inside the absolute value equation, we just have negative 11. Yeah? So we're going to add from the left-hand side negative 11 plus 25 equals y minus the absolute value of 31. Now we can take those absolute value statements individually and see what they mean. The absolute value of something is just how far that number is from zero. So if I had, say, a number line here and I had just a few quick sketch little ticks on it and say we had 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. The absolute value of a number is just how many steps it is back to zero from that number. So the absolute value of three, for instance, is one, two, three. It's three steps, so the absolute value of three is three. That's also the absolute value of negative three, because it's also three steps back to zero. So the absolute value of negative three is just three. Yeah, so we can apply that same logic here to the two numbers we have. The absolute value of negative 11 is going to be positive 11, because if it's 11 steps to the left of 0, it's going to be 11 steps back to 0 again. So now we just have 11 plus 25 on the left, and y minus the absolute value of 31, which is just 31. So y minus 31 on the right, 11 plus 25 is 36. y minus 31 on the right. Let's get that 31 back to the other side, so we'll add it to both sides, and we'll get 67 equals y. So really, once we got going, that problem was not nearly as difficult as it looked. The hard part was getting started. That's where that concept about if you don't know what you should do, do something you know you can do, comes in. All we had to do to make it more recognizable was combine those two y's, which we've been doing since pre-algebra, and then identify the whole concept of what these absolute values were. And since this whole chapter talks about absolute values, probably pretty comfortable with those by the time you get to the end of it anyway. So there you go, Gavin. I hope that helped you out.